Every Monday night since about the end of March, the church-going people of Austin, Indiana, have marched through the streets in the north end of their town and prayed for the people who live there. Revive this community, O oh God. God, you're the only thing that can bring hope, O oh God. Austin has a population of only 4,300 people, but 150 from in and around town have become HIV positive in just the last several months. The biggest HIV outbreak in a small, rural American town ever. And we just pray that your hand would be up on them this very There probably isn't Jesus anyone in this march who doesn't know that this neighborhood has been churning out drug addicts for years. Users hooked on prescription painkillers, sharing needles and diseases. HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. Take back this neighborhood. I lived here when I was a little girl and it was a whole lot different than it is now. That's for sure. Faith is big in Austin. It has at least 35 Christian churches. But there is now also a billboard on the I-65 just outside of town that encourages HIV testing. Rolling into Austin, you're immediately shown the way to the outreach center where you can get an HIV test. Or get clean needles at the needle exchange, something Indiana had outlawed until the HIV outbreak scared the state into suspending its anti-drug paraphernalia law for a while. This has been the place to come since I was getting, since I started getting high. I started Brandy getting wouldn't give us her last name, wouldn't let us show her face, ago. but she wanted to tell her story. Have you been tested? Yes. When? Two and a half weeks ago. What happened? I'm HIV positive, along with hepatitis B positive, along with hepatitis C positive. Huh. When you heard that, what did you, what did you feel? Mm, actually, I really feel dead. You feel dead? Yeah, not like feel dead, but it's like you don't, I mean, you pretty much, with Hep B, Hep C, and HIV, you pretty much are. Brandy still shoots up the painkiller Opana at least three times a day, but now she has clean needles and doesn't share used ones. Before they started supplying us with clean needles, they, um, you know, everybody used after everybody else. Yeah. Because Did we you do tried that? to, yep, because we tried to go into the local Walmart and buy them, and they wouldn't sell them to us because of our our arms. Really? With that? Yep. Track mark. Track mark. Yep. I'd like to give everyone an update to the, on today's numbers from the Indiana State Department of Health. Every week now, state health officers brief reporters on new HIV cases in Austin. Dr. Jennifer Wathel seems to have been expecting an outbreak like this somewhere, someday. This is a, a culture that has been long-standing uh, here in this community and we know in many others. Austin's only doctor, William Cook, says the HIV outbreak was inevitable because of the drug addict's needle sharing. And that was all inevitable because of the poverty and lack of opportunity. I'm not sure that, that Austin is really that, that different from a lot of towns across rural America. You know, I worry about the other people in the surrounding area that uh, are living similar lives as the people here. You know, what are we doing for them? Are we doing enough? And my guess is that we're not and we're failing those communities just like we've failed Austin. Linda Thomas was a typical casualty of IV drug use through most of her teens. She's been clean for more than a year now and sometimes takes her baby on the prayer walk. Both she and her husband Jeremy know very well the cycle of hopelessness that leads to drugs and to more hopelessness. You wake up sick, you wake up with withdrawals, you really feel the symptoms other than just mentally in your head. Um, you get the sweats, you're restless, your legs hurt, sometimes you throw up, uh, get real bad pains in your stomach. I mean, it's just a miserable feeling. It's like Satan's taking over your body. No it's, control. Uh, no control, it's wicked. And, uh, and it's like that every day. Yeah. Every day you wake up. Yep. Neither Linda nor Jeremy is HIV positive, but not long ago, they were both pretty sure their futures would only be darker and more desperate than their pasts. It's painful to think about it. It makes you quiver to think of the things you used to do. And it's amazing to know that I overcame that. And I overcame that with Christ. It is simple, but it's not easy. What becoming church people did for them was erase the sense of loneliness and worthlessness they had been trying to escape through drugs. People need to know even though Austin is consumed with drugs right now, um, they're people, you know, they're God's people. And they're me, they're you, they're just people that 
got led into sin and they got consumed in their sin and they're lost and they need us to get out. What is the recovery leading them to? Um, there needs to be some sort of opportunity uh, there for them. Um, if they come out from IV drug use and they don't have anything, you know, what have, what have we done for them? God, we will continue, God, to lift up those that, God, that are struggling with, with, with bondages, God, and alcoholism, God, and drugs, God. The God, HIV outbreak has turned a spotlight on Austin, and that has brought help from as far away as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta. No tears. <laughs> it's not unusual to hear people call that a blessing in disguise or an answer to their prayers. Keith Bogue, CBC News, Austin, Indiana.